my brothers and sisters, our God is alive. And He is here. He is with us. And He loves us so much. Could you spend a few minutes more to speak in tongue, to sing a new song? Hallelujah. Sing a new song. Wherever you are, sing a new song to the Lord our God to break the atmosphere of the evil one. Hallelujah. And to lift the glory of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Share. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing a new song. Oh, sing a new song. Hallelujah. She la 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, we love you, Lord. 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 We love you, Jesus. 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 We love. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Oh, 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. No, 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 no. Church, I want to tell you one more time. I know that you know that Jesus really loves you. And He has a wonderful plan for you and for your family. In the pandemic of this world, it's really difficult all around the world. There's nobody sometimes that we could depend on. But trust me, my brothers and sisters, trust me that the Lord our God loves you. You can depend on Him. You can trust in His love. I'm sure. I guarantee. You know why? Because more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to, to this earth and He died for all of us. And He counts us as a righteous men and women of God for two who accept his love. He counts us sons and daughters of the King. He loves you. This week, my topic of this sermon, we're going to carry on the topic of love. The topic of love. Love is really, really important for every one of us. We want people to love us. 
especially God but he said he loves us he will not leave us nor forsaking us but he promised to be with us to the end of this age this is the word from the Bible is not my word I guarantee that he is watching over you I guarantee that his hand is upon you he sing over you church I really miss you as well with this world pandemic we don't get to see everyone we only broadcast from our church here but let me tell you myself my family and pastors and leaders and everyone here at New Life Fellowship we miss you we can't wait to come together we give everyone a hug or greet if it's a formal greeting face to face but it's soon my brothers and sisters right soon we will see each other soon the work of the devil need to be destroyed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ amen amen let's get ready for the word of God thank you so much the worship team you uh, take a break <laughs> So this week, my privilege to share with you on the topic of love. But the topic today, I kind of write it, I study about it, I meditate and pray. I kind of make it like maybe like a uh, cool, sound like cool, the road to love. <laughs> the road to love. I'm going to read, you know, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. A. You have learned many weeks from you know our great pastor, Pastor Jason. He brings a great word every week to all of us. But this week, I'm going to try. So love, what is love? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. And this week, talking love, it is not easily angered. It keep no record of wrongs. Verse 6, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trust, always hopes, always perseveres, H-A, love never fails. Love never fails because everyone wants love. I need love, you need love, people all over the world need love. I'm going to bring that topic, love is not easy, easily angered. Why? Why does scripture say that? Because in this world, it's not a perfect world. In this world, people offend us, we offend others. And we, from time to time, upset of each other. That love is not easily to get angry. And love keep no record of wrong. Let me touch base on some scriptures of Related to anger. In Psalm chapter 37 verse 8. Don't give in to worry or anger. It only leads to trouble. Don't give in to worry or anger. Because this worry of anger leads to trouble. How many people need trouble in our life? We have enough of our own. We don't need more. But... If you're not careful with this anger, with this worry thing, it will lead to trouble. The good news is, when you can act based on your negative emotions, or might make the wrong decision to take time, you know, when, when, when you, somebody uh, hate you, when somebody, you know, do wrong thing against you, you react toward them right away, 
to get upset, to get angry. But we, you and I, need to calm ourselves down before doing anything else, before we respond back to them. Proverbs 29, 22, people with quick tempers cause a lot of quarreling and trouble. People with quick tempers cause a lot of quarreling. People, many people hate quarreling, but from time to time we end up in quarreling. So we don't want that. Quick temper, we need to be careful with the temper. Proverbs 14, 17, people with hot, with a hot temper do foolish things. <laughs> people with a hot temper do foolish things. Wiser people remain calm. The wiser people, they, they, they affect like everyone else. They affect like me, like you, you know, but the wiser, the people that are wiser or the wise, the people that use wisdom, they seem to be calm, that they seem to wait a little bit before they respond. So anger is not good for people. There are um, um, righteous anger and non-righteous anger. Today I'm going to touch base on non-righteous anger. There are so many stories in the Bible. Maybe so many stories that you are facing in your life that you see it firsthand related to anger. But I'm going to pick some story from the Bible, the story of Cain. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 48, Abel also, so this, this time after God created heaven and the earth, God placed people on this earth, Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve have children. Their children bring sacrifices to the Lord. Adam and Eve have two children. One is Cain, one is Abel. But in this real story, and verse 4, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry. God, how come? You love my brother. How come you accept the offering from my brother than myself? He became very angry, angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why have your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do the right thing according to the command, according to what God wants, of course the Lord will accept his offering. And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Cain, you need to rule over your sin. Cain, you need to rule over your anger. If you don't rule over your anger, your anger will rule over you, and the anger will destroy you. So verse 8, Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up again his brother, Abel, and killed him. That is really sad. Can you imagine you're in the family? Brothers and sisters belong to one family, but because of Cain cannot control over his anger, 
His anger leads him to kill his brother. It's really sad. Another story. Story of Moses. Moses is a great man of God. Moses had led people through all kinds of circumstances. I'm going to read from uh, number chapter 20, verse 6 to 12. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell face down. And the glory of the Lord appears to them. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, before the, the eyes of the people. And it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock. In the history of the well, nobody could bring water out of the rock. Only God could. God could do all the impossible things. So you will bring water out of the rock. You bring water by the command of the Lord, of the rock, for the community. So they and their livestock can drink. Verse 9, so Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded him. Verse 10, he and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock. And Moses said to them, listen. You rebels, <laughs> can you imagine? God don't tell him to say that. <laughs> because Moses, he kept his anger in his heart. Why are you complaining so much? Why are you complaining so much? And therefore Moses said, listen, you rebels, <laughs> must, be bring, <laughs> must be bring you water out of this rock. Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice. With his staff, water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. Did the Lord tell them to hit the rock? No. The Lord told Moses to speak to the rock in front of the assembly, in front of the people, in front of the Israelite community. But Moses, with his anger, he hit twice. He disobeyed God. He looked down on what God's command. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough. God said to Moses, You don't trust in me enough. God doesn't say you don't trust in me at all. You don't trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelis. Israelites. You will not bring this community into the land I give them. Aaron and Moses, they are great leader. They're really great leader. The goal of the Lord is to bring the Israelites out of Egypt, go toward the promised land. Because life in Egypt is not good. Life in Egypt lies as a slave. Life in the promised land lies life as a leader. But in order, as a head as well, in order to be the leader, in order to be the, the, the head of everything, these people need to listen and obey the Lord God. So Moses and Aaron get to lead the Israelites for a while. And because of this incident, because of this obedience, they did not get to go to the promised land. So, this is important for all of us. Do not solve my problem. I try not to solve my problem with anger. You also don't solve your problem while you are angry. Cool it down first before solving it. So Moses should wait a little bit, calm down a little bit, and speak to the rock. But no, I need to do it right now. 
and that is anger. It's not good for all of us. Another one, it's love keep no record of wrong. Some other stories happen to, to uh, Jacob's family. It's Joseph's brother, you know, sons of Jacob. In Genesis 37, verse 4, when his brothers saw their father love, loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So, you know, they live in the same roof, siblings, but they all brothers and sister, Joseph's brother, really don't like Joseph. Because they hated him, they keep record one after another, up to the point that they cannot talk kind word to Joseph. Because they keep record. Genesis chapter 17, uh, 37 as well, verse 11. His brother were jealous of him, but his father keep the matter in mind. All the brother, all jealous. Because they keep the record, keep the record, keep the record. Oh, that guy a dreamer. Keep dreaming, keep dreaming. And the brother did not like that at all. But the father kept it in his mind. Another one in Genesis 37, verse 18 to 20. This one day, Jacob sent uh, Joseph to bring food to the brother in the field. But 18, when they saw him from a distance... And before he came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Now then, come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the, pit, of the pits. And he will say, a wild beast devour him. Then let us see what will become of these dreams. Because they, their goal, the brother's goal is to, come on. You keep saying you dream about it. You keep saying you dream about that. Keep saying this, keep saying that. Our, brother, our father loves you. Let's kill you. And so what will happen to your dream? You know, family like this, it's not good. They need a revelation in their family, because they keep record. Another story related to King Saul. King Saul is a great man, handsome man, and tall, and he's a king. But in 1 Samuel, was, uh, chapter 18, verse 11 to 12, and Saul, Saul get jealous at David, because David is a smart guy. And David loved the Lord. And King Saul keeping record of David. So David did not do wrong. But King Saul keep adding record more and more and more. There's one point. The sin of King Saul caused King Saul to behave badly. In verse, um, um, in verse uh, 11, uh, And Saul cast a spear, for he said, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped his presence twice. Can you imagine? In the presence of the king. And the king wanted to kill you. Life is not fun. On the run. Now Saul was afraid of David. Because the Lord was with David. Was with him. But had, but had um, Departed from Saul. David have to depart from Saul. Because, you know, sometimes when you live with somebody always jealous with you. Always keep a record of, you know, of you. And then you can't live. You can't live with them. So David have to run away. And another scripture. In chapter 19, 1 Samuel 19, uh, uh, verse 10 to 11. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear. But he slipped away from Saul's presence. And he uh, drew the spear into the wall. 
So David fled and escaped that night. So can you imagine one after another? Your life is really, really at risk. I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you've lived with somebody, always keep a record of you. It's not fun. Your life will be at risk. And you also, if you keep record of somebody, one day people will see you that you, you're not a good man, you're not a good woman. So why do we get angry easily? Because their expectation did not fulfill. Let me tell you something. Unfulfilled expectations will lead to offense, offenses. And offend lead to anger. And anger lead to hate. And hate lead to murder. This is not fun. This is not good. So we need to remember that. Let me say one more time. Why people get angry easily. The reason they get angry because their expectation did not fulfill. Unfulfilled expectation will lead to offense. An offense will lead to anger. And anger will lead to hate. And hate will lead to murder. Like Cain did to his brother. It's not good like King Saul did to David. What are the solutions toward our anger and record, record keeping? Point number one. We need to watch our anger. Love is not easy to get angry. Remind ourselves of that. If I'm to love somebody, of course that person commit wrong against me. I need to think twice. I need to wait. I need to calm down. I need to watch over my anger. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 to 27, be angry and yet do not sin. Of course we, we have anger. But when, be angry, but yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not let the sun go down. Solve it before the sun go down. The other meaning, solve it before your anger multiplies and causes you to become more angrier. And do not give the devil an opportunity. Not stay angry all day when you get angry my brother and sister be careful check it out be careful you make sure to cool it down you make sure to don't give any opportunity to the devil when you give the opportunity to the devil the devil will twist it the devil will cause bigger problem you know in this life, as long as you live on this earth, you will experience angry. You will experience frustration. All of that. But we can choose which is choose to love. We can choose to love. We can choose to forgive. Point number two. To keep us from becoming angry and keeping record. Number two, keep no record toward the wrongdoing. Keep no record. Love keeps no record of wrong. If I'm to say I love somebody with the real love, I need to think twice. And that person committed wrong thing against me, or keep record or anything like that, I have to, I have to love that person. I count that person as my brothers or as a, a person that they don't know what they are doing. This one day, they brought a lady who, um, because they caught her in adultery. In John chapter 8, verse uh, 7 to 11. But when, and so they brought, brought, it, brought that, uh, that lady who caught on adultery, brought to Jesus. 
So Jesus, what must you do? We caught this lady commit sin in our community. But when Jesus, uh, but when they persisted in asking Jesus, asking him, he straightened up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and rolled on the ground. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older one. And he was left alone and the woman where she was in the center of the court. Straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on and sin no more. Jesus loved first and correct the person later. Lady, I love you. Lady, I forgive you. Lady, I'm not going to condemn you. But from today on, go sin no more. Another story. These people beat Jesus and torture Jesus and crucify Jesus. Luke 23, verse 33, 34. When they came to the place called the skull, where they crucify him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. All of these people torture Jesus badly, mock Jesus, spit on Jesus, looking down on Jesus. None of those behavior happened to us like that. Might be few, but Jesus is willing to forgive these people. He asked the Father to forgive them. So in summary, love keep no record of wrong. If we are to love somebody, we cannot keep a record of wrong. God sees the sinful people, the murderers, the adulterers, the liars, the thieves, the very wicked people through the filter of his love. He loves them and is going to give them a chance of hope. See, guess what? Related to that lady, I believe that that lady is not, will not allow that kind of behavior. Will not allow somebody to persuade her to sleep with her anymore because she at that time maybe she don't know that the way that she do that toward people maybe is to receive love but that's not real love but she find the real love through the Lord God so we as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ we need to do the same thing. When somebody do wrong against us, we need to choose love rather than hate, rather than allowing anger to rule over us. Point number three. To stop anger and to stop writing or keeping a record of wrong, to start loving. For love comes from God to us and we receive love from Him and we as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, we share love with the people around us. So when people make mistakes, when people curse us, 
when people are gossiping, you know, and looking down on us and all that. We need to forgive them. We need to look at them as sons and daughters and pray for them and give them a chance. And one day, that person will turn around and believe in the Lord. And that person will turn around and love others. This is the world that we live in. It's not a perfect world. But my prayer is that every one of us will become like the Lord our God. We love people. Choose to love no matter what. Because love is from God. Maybe people are watching us today. You don't experience the real love from God. I encourage you to go to God and pray and ask God and spend time in the Word and you see who Jesus is. Jesus is love. He's a God that sent from heaven to this earth to show the love, the real love of the Heavenly Father. He loves us. He shares His love with us and we need to share our love with others as well. So if any people experience with anger and stuff like that, we need to be careful because anger is not good for us. Anger and the end of anger will lead to murder. So therefore, we need to slow down. We need to love God to come in into our life with His real love so that we can love others as well. I believe that God can transform His real love in your life as well. Could I pray for you? Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much for sending the Lord Jesus Christ to this earth to love us, Lord God. Lord God, help us to love others. Lord God, like your scripture said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Lord God, those people that they don't know you yet, they cannot taste and see that you are good, but they can taste and see through all of us. Lord God, empower us to experience your love more and more so that we can share our love with others, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you are with us always, Lord God. And thank you, Lord, for your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So if you want to experience love, want to grow in God, we have cell group all over the city. You can, you know, um, message to our church and we will direct you to the, the right cell group and all that. And so if you need to give tithes and offering, also we have it in the screen as well. So God bless you. And I believe that God loves you so much. I can't wait to see you face to face. God bless you. Amen.